Um, oh, this is such a big family. Oh, the house full. Uh, so first of all, Tashi uh, Delik and hello. Uh, uh, so <clears throat> today, a very special day. Um, very special day. Uh, um, because all of you are having a very special moment. Uh, but I am a, a little bit curious that even though I say special moment, are you finding this day special or not? Uh, but when I look at you, I can feel it. This is very special. I call it a very special day for two, two purposes. One, uh, now this world that we are living, we are going through such a huge problem. Not a um, financial problem, <coughs> but more <coughs> we are becoming uh, through uh, mind that we cannot get much rest. Uh, so much kind of uh, uh, our right or our way of thinking, how it is has so much uh, impact through all this craziness going on. So now we need to take a little bit of time off and uh, reflect to your own mind. But the beautiful thing, even uh, this uh, uh, difficult time, uh, I think uh, sometimes we say the peace is taken away. But to be, to be honest, if you really look into our mind, but this still peace can be found. It's a way of how we accept it. And then uh, now in order to do that, we are trying our best to find happiness. Uh, this this is not only what we are doing. I think the outside the birds and the monkeys and the small creature ants, they are also looking for it. But we are he inside here also looking for a peace. So the peace or the happiness, we are all looking for it, no doubt. So we have this already gift. Uh, but now the difficult to answer is, what is that peace that you're looking for? So I think the whole world is uh, going a little bit unstable because they cannot answer what is that peace that what we are looking for. And then we have this all our way of uh, accepting different, different kind of a peace. And then a conflict is there. Mm. So now today, now my second the, the way of thinking to today's day special is today uh, is a Visak. Uh, it is uh, the month that on, on the uh, the calendar uh, in the in the India in the Southeast Asia or wherever this uh, uh, Visak uh, is celebrated. 
So most of the uh, Buddhist uh, practitioners believe today when we do something good, it multiplies yeah, uh, millions and billions. <laughs> so uh, that is uh, one, uh, uh, I think, uh, it might be okay to say, maybe some people might argue, say, this is a one very good uh, business way to bring it into practice. Uh, because uh, who doesn't like uh, if somebody can multiply doing one thing and multiply thousand and billion times? It sounds like you have a dollar and then that become like uh, lots of Indian rupees. <laughs> <laughs> you have one one dollar and then there's a day it becomes like uh, 100,000 rupees. People will love it. Who will not do this kind of business? Uh, but um, the m one of the the greatest the greatest thing for the Buddhism, uh, how I find the Buddhism, is not all this uh, business way of thinking, but what is behind that? All the rituals, the practice, meditation, all, all sort of things you go to the His Holiness Temple, and then you can see many people doing so many uh, reciting, or doing circular meditation. All these uh, are actually, uh, they are doing it. It is designed to be, to develop or achieve one thing. That uh, uh, the I think your teacher Glenn, where is uh, where is Glenn? Somewhere. Uh, is here? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, as he taught, uh, he's uh, taught you about four noble truth, and then uh, when we talk about uh, four noble truth, so then the most. One of the most important thing is, um, I think, cessation. Because the more that person feel uh, suffered, and then he wanted to get rid of the suffering, and the biggest mantra, the biggest th thing, the most important thing that will, very genuine thing will come out from depth of room, his heart will be, can I ever stop it forever? This is a very, very powerful question. So when Buddha taught Four Noble Truths, then he first taught about varieties of suffering. And then he said, know the suffering. And then he said, uh, in order to know the suffering more, you need to look into the cause of the suffering, which uh, we are kind of neglected on this side. Because uh, in this through my experience, and if you look around uh, around you, many people will uh, share their pain towards you, and you will sh also share your pain to others. But that is already manifest. But then, who will uh, will say, "I am so worried that I'm." 
going towards the suffering. Who will worry that much? But we will only worry when all the things has already like done. And then we cry. And we, we just complain. It is not a really a smart move. The smart move should be learning from the mistake. That's what is Buddha said. Know the suffering. And then looking into the cause of the suffering. So now I think uh, what we are uh, <coughs> gathering here is to not to learn about suffering. That we are quite uh, experienced so but what we haven't experienced or learned is the connecting the dot from suffering to the cause of the suffering and that I think it's very necessary uh, so my one of my teachers this morning is a very special day so I put on the, his teaching and listened. And uh, the minute when I uh, play that uh, mp3, uh, the audio, and then it is kind of like very directly teaching to me um, that he said something uh, do we always feel that uh, when you are under the sway of the negative emotion, do you feel annoyed? Hmm. That is so powerful. Because I think nobody complains like that. And my teacher, when I clicked, <laughs> played that, through a computer, then it was just like, I just stop it there. It's like, a, I need to meditate on this now. It was so powerful. And then all the things that in the past, what I went through, a problem. And then I just came to realize Mm. that uh, I forget to look into my mind and then uh, actually this word uh, my teacher used is shedang so in the word somebody could help me with the Tibetan word shedang I think I'm the only the one. <laughs> okay. So it's okay. Some people are, are they they have a uh, the what we call they are young need, so they couldn't say anything. So uh, so anyway, the it is more like uh, mm, what's that? No. Uh, it's kind of like a anger. It's more like a, uh, it's not completely like anger, but it's more towards anger. It's more like saying, I had enough of enough. This is too. So normally we use this uh, word when you are, you are kind of uh, uh, completely under the sway of mm, uh, the negative emotion, which is the anger. But here, anger has no room because your opponent, your uh, 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 your opponent is the anger, negative emotion. So, so it's more saying now. <coughs> I kind of realize that these three poisonous mind, which is anger, attachment, and ignorance mind, 
within having this kind of influence in my, uh, my daily life is somehow going to destroy my life. That is so powerful. I think we can say this is what Buddhism is about, thinking like this and then coming up to get the antidote. In this world, mostly most people will say uh, anger is very bad. And then the sign of that is saying like, wish I haven't said that. I have I I don't know what really happened to me. Uh, sorry for my this uh, uh, what we call a <coughs> short tempered or uh, you have so many words for that. But then, if you are having a strong attachment, and then you are, you are not going to say that I'm having attachment towards you. Because it sounds very uh, uh, uncomfortable. And that's why we say, I love you very much. Uh, but then, deep inside, when you try to think whether it is attachment or this is a, a love, then somehow you can feel like, oh, there's strong attachment down there. It's less love and more attachment there. So then you will be super careful. <coughs> so then it is hard, harder than recognizing this kind of negative emotion and then the anger so that's why uh, this attachment can be so mixed up with the feeling <coughs> more it is mixed and that it can be so uh, powerful so attachment is so powerful and then the why you are doing this all this uh, attachment and then through the the also the uh, anger uh, his holiness the lama uh, said very nicely saying in order to protect your feeling or protect yourself it it looks like the anger is trying to protect you something but it's a very stupid way of protecting yourself because uh, in English we have say, saying that you lose the cool, coolness, isn't it? Uh, and then it's, a, it's a really funny because whatever you just met a mass and then uh, next day it is so uncomfortable to meet that person. And maybe you, even you see his shoes uh, somewhere, you feel like you hate that shoes. <laughs> uh, and and even, even, even though this is uh, maybe uh, uh, very expensive shoes. Uh, and then, uh, very stupid thing, because uh, if that person is coming towards you, you, then you need to go through other road. Maybe it's a dead end road. So, <laughs> no, uh, very, very uh, funny things c comes after that. So then, now if you we look deep inside where these uh, two uh, negative emotions, anger and this attachment really is rooted, it comes from. It's not other than the ignorance mind, which is very um, simple. We say, I need to do it, I. So that I is something that you have uh, grasped so much, then in order to fulfill the wishes of the I, and then you need all this 
two uh, negative emotions, to feel full, uh, the visions of the eye. But then the Buddha, uh, here the Buddha has uh, spoken uh, on this, saying, um, on this special day, so on the, uh, on the, now, on the 23rd, it's the f full, full moon, 15th. So th that day, uh, now a few days later, uh, we believe that Buddha has uh, uh, fully awakened from the ignorance mind. And then he uh, said, we don't need the ignorance mind to support our, uh, support ourselves. Uh, having the ignorance mind saying that I fling, f thinking this so solid inherently existence then the question it really becomes just thinking like that what's wrong with that but that it's so uh, dangerous because if you feel, if it's true, it's the reality, no problem. If it is against the reality, and then you still think it's the true. And who will see uh, this way of uh, clinking is so wrong? The fully awakened can see this. For an example, uh, the great uh, Nalanda Pandita, uh, the Ch Chandakirti, said uh, he's a super um, uh, poet, poetry, right? poet, 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 poet. Uh, in his uh, uh, text, uh, entering to the middle way, he said there are three different kinds of uh, uh, compassion. The one of the most important the compassion is uh, he gave this very nice example uh, saying uh, me looking into the the lake very clear still lake and the, it is a time of night and this a breeze is there and then you can see the uh, reflection of the moon in there. And then thinking, thinking this is the real moon. And then through that there is attachment. Thinking this is the real thing, then you just doing everything for this. Maybe taking a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very stupid, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then posting online saying, oh, this is the real moon. The people who saw the real moon, it is just very stupid behavior. So similarly, what the Chandrakirti is saying, looking into this moon, and then attachment, everything is unnecessary, a waste of energy. The good thing is, once you really see the the real moon and that is wrong all the negative emotions all this uh, unnecessary uh, energy or the mm, uh, negative emotions that comes from that one seeing that is a mystic in mind will tear down all this problem and then seeing seeing the the truth, which is the emptiness of that. So it is quite confusing for all of us. For me, also a little bit confusing, even though I studied a lot. Because whenever we hear the emptiness, then automatically we just come like, there's nothing. But sometimes I... It, uh, when you, uh, I was very young, maybe I'm a little bit smart. 
I'm not sure. You, uh, I, I will leave this to you. Uh, when I have this strong uh, grasping or s attachment coming, I try to meditate. When I was 13, 14 years old. And then I, my teacher and um, my attendants will uh, tell me, ad advise me to practice on emptiness. And then I felt like, oh, this uh, beautiful woman, okay, mm, does not exist. Does not exist. <laughs> Can't help anything. <laughs> so, so that sometimes, then I, I stopped this practice. And then uh, almost maybe for for five years, I didn't think about emptiness. So then one day when my teacher was giving a teaching on emptiness, then he said something amazing. That he's saying, he gives this kind of example. Like uh, he will show this book. Like This is a kind of magic. When you look at this like booklet, the small thing, you think the book is here. And then I put one page, two page, you still think the book is here. And then you take it one, two, and then only one page is here, you will think the book is here. And then you close it, the book is already there, not here. So what that really means is, normally how we grasp, all the thing is so permanently there. It exists solitary from there. There's nothing that can be changed. It's, it's like this. But the reality, in order to understand uh, one, the beauty of understanding of emptiness is it gives you room to understand how things function how uh, things are dependent on each other. And then also His Holiness the Dalai Lama gives this very beautiful uh, example, saying, if a person cannot stand up by his own and need to depend on something to stand up, and then uh, that person has to always think, I cannot do it from my own. From my side, there's cannot, there's no uh, kind of a uh, energy for me to stand up by my own. This is the kind of emptiness, saying there's nothing can be from its own. But then you feel like. I really appreciate that me standing up has to depend everything on that. So for that, if we look into all these you know, phenomena, whether it's this flower or uh, person, and then you try to uh, say this flower is so beautiful and then the attachment really comes when you feel like this is so good this is so great but then in order to take this down because attachment that object that appearance is so strongly somewhere uh, diluting your mind that we see that so now, uh, looking at the flower, and then you have to be very careful when you say this be be uh, flower is so beautiful. So yes, the flower can be so beautiful, but at the same time, you have to ask a question, is the beautiful 
this existence of the beautiful it's from its own or its own dependent on each other so that's why way of our grasping that is to to bring awareness in the future when you meditate on emptiness when ever this grasping strong grasping comes when you feel the true existence of the beauty beauty beautiness beauty of the flower it exists by its own but then if you meditate uh, like uh, maybe some of you have read the heart sutra we call the heart sutra one of the most powerful sutra in there uh am i too fast my english is very slow like this so if something that you need to check with me you can okay maybe you can sit somewhere here huh um so the uh in order to understand how things really function and if you uh don't cannot take away this mistaken mind which is that it's a, you have this innate uh grasping if you cannot take this away and every time every time when this kind of a way of thinking stays in your brain your mind and then uh wow, how much you say things does not exist by its own and then uh, deep inside you're still having this kind of influence or from the past whatever you, you have collected this kind of a mistaken information it's so difficult to tear down when especially you you are uh, under the sway of negative emotion so for that reason uh, i think we need to uh, look at an analytical meditation if uh, as now we talk about meditation it is really necessary uh, when we talk about meditation it is necessary that uh, there is two types of meditation analytical meditation and single pointed meditation but what is famous is single pointed meditation but in order to in order to to have a good single pointed meditation we need uh to have uh, the the cause the cause of this single pointed meditation is the analytical meditation how can i prove it very simple i i'm not saying this guy this big statue there, there called lama chongkapa in his text he said uh, analytical meditation is the one of the main uh, the cause and the practice uh, preliminary practice for the medit- uh, in uh, the single pointed meditation and he gives a very uh, beautiful powerful uh, example saying one of the thing that we have we are so familiar uh, is the meditation what we have is attachment and anger so especially anger it's powerful but it does not stay so long if you are angry like for like red face for maybe 2 3 hours then it will be very difficult for you <laughs> you may be end up in icu <laughs> but the attachment it's a one of the uh, the example 
because the Lama Tsongkhapa explained in his text, saying, mm, you know, order this, because take this as the example, the attachment, when you have it, it can just, uh, the meditation experience, what we have, just starting with the relationship and then all this message coming from your friend whom you are looking into this relation very strongly, and then even this, like uh, the message, the the tone that the, the ringing or the beep or, or signal, it gives you so much pleasant moments. So we have all this experience. So, and then sometimes with this strong attachment, you, sometimes you cannot eat. Mm. You can think, concentrate properly, but you are concentrate, your concentration is somewhere else. Uh, so, the great, uh, this master said, uh, why this meditation, what we ha already are used to, is so powerful. Uh, it is with so much information that we have collected. If we don't have that strong information not collected, then if we ask somebody, ask yourself, be angry at him. You, I cannot become angry at you like this. And you are so experienced on the level of attachment, you cannot bring attachment to that person in front of you right away. So what that really uh, is showing to us is we need to have uh, lots of information before going into the this focus, this uh, single-minded meditation, like the anchor and the attachment as an example. So this great master has given this kind of a, uh, um, advice to us. So for that uh, reason, uh, in order to, to bring a single-pointed meditation, it is so necessary that we need to collect uh, lots of uh, related, uh, relevant uh, information. So then, uh, once the question, the biggest question is, uh, if you have the single-pointed meditation, if you, if you, somebody needs water? Okay. Um, if you have the single point of meditation. So when I was young, I was, th I was thinking like that. If I have a single mod 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 uh, meditation very strongly, so if somebody will upset me, then I will do the single point of meditation. For how long? For how long? And then, you pass from this and there will be another enemy in a different form, different way of all the other problems. And then you will say, stop, I'm going to meditate. <laughs> That's really funny. It will be very funny. I was thinking like, how does that really help? But the most important, if you don't, if you can feel all this anger, that comes with the one kind of seat Sabin, that what's in the Tibetan. If you don't see this is coming from this, if I can take away this kind of a seat, then I will be never be happy. So in order to take away this seat of the anger, attachment, only the single point of meditation is the solution here. So then there we say, in the Four Noble Truths, cessation, to cease. And then this is what we call our true main refuge. So Buddha, the kind Buddha said, if you wanted to become a Buddhist, you have to take a refuge in this. That I can. I can cut down the root of the suffering. 
which is the ignorance mind and the deceit of it. Once you feel it, then you take a refuge. That actually refuge is not taking a refuge directly to the Buddha. It's taking more refuge to yourself, actually. It's more new version of you. And that I felt so amazing. So from that day, when I experienced that, I felt that, and then I learned from my teacher, then I just felt so proud to say, I'm a Buddhist. Because this is a, we can say this is kind of a new way of thinking, a new chap chapter of mine. So for that reason, in uh, this month, if you look around, the Tibetans are doing so much effort. Uh, many Tibetans love to eat meat, but this month, they try to avoid. <laughs> that includes me. Yeah. So for this, <coughs> why? The sad thing is, some people don't know what they are doing it. They are doing it because, oh, now this business mind. If I have uh, do one merit, good thing that multiplies billions and hundreds and thousands. And they are doing like this. But for my case, and for some of the practitioners' case, could be a little different. I need a merit to, to achieve something. That achievement is, I wanted to feel, I wanted to face this the, the ignorance mind, which is the root of all this suffering, that one day I could say, yes, this is it. I got you. Like you might have, <coughs> you might have uh, some uh, uh, I can, uh, a thief in your family. Okay, uh, and then, but the thief could be so friendly, like the your attachment and the anger feel like necessary and needed, but somehow it is taking taking away so much energy, or like a thief, it takes us your uh, earning money or uh, some documents, important documents from you, and then one day. You look at through your CC camera that so close friend of yours that is the a mole or a, a some kind of a, a thief disguised as a your friend or family. Then first thing without hatred, but you will be super happy. Now the from this day. I need to be super careful with this because I know the root of the all the problem comes from here. So similarly, for a good practitioner has to think where does all this leakage problem, all this problem comes from? And then you can find the answer, yes, this is it. This is the one. So. Uh, Buddha, Buddha's, if you look at the, all the teachings of Buddha, uh, including, you can see so many uh, in the Tibetan Buddhist monasteries, you can see all the deities and all the tangas and the paintings and the mantras and all this is there. This is, we can call a secondary method a kind of method to bring out, to recognize how the ignorance mind, what is the ignorance mind, and how to uh, 
elim eliminate that. So then these are the, all the methods. But sadly, most people are using the secondary thing as a one main practice. And what is the main practice is never spoken. And then uh, we can see uh, uh, there could be a saying like my uh, my way of practicing is much better than yours. Yours is uh, not that good. So all this kind of a debate on attachment is there. So f uh, because now you are all are new, most of our are new to Buddhism or uh, to this kind of a uh, practice. So, as my topic of th uh, this teaching today is called Essence of Buddha's Teaching, that's right? <laughs> right? I hope it's right. <laughs> Essence. So now, we really need to know what is the essence of the Buddha's teaching. So essence of the Buddha teaching, then you uh, you should be the one that to say, from today, I'm trying, I'm going to look for what is uh, really disturbing my mind inside me. Because we have all, up to now, we have already complained towards others. But we somehow neglected or forgot or maybe not got advice to look into our mind. So now here, this moment, like uh, when you take this course, you should be thinking, uh, what are the some kind of faults that is within me? But remember, it is not to say you are bad. Try, try to f find what is bad in you. So because we don't want to find something bad in you, yourself. But in order to improve yourself, if you don't find a mistake in you, and then there's no room for in, in, uh, improvement. So in order to, uh, because in the, this is a mantra of the Heart Sutra, Tayata Gade Gade Para Gade Para Sam Gade Buddha Soha. That means going along the path, to path, to path, to the highest path. You need to see some kind of a, uh, the mistake in mind, and then you want to achieve better, and then better, better, and then you become the, uh, the just before I come in, we were discussing something in this small room here, saying, we, uh, Buddhists believe in a superpower, miracle. But that superpower is a little different than the superpower of the what it's shown on a big screen, like uh, the uh, Avengers. It's not like you don't have anything with you, and somebody comes and you make some kind of machines and you put it here and you become so powerful. Not like that. <coughs> it is more like you can look into your mind and then you can see that mind is so beautiful, so powerful. And up to now, I'm focusing only on the faults, and I'm looking towards only to the negative side. But I forgot totally to look inside what is really, really precious in me. And that, for that, on this path, you need uh, so much uh, uh, support two types of support. One support like a teacher, 
and friends, Dharma friends, to saying like, you can do it, you can do it, look at it, I'm doing it, you are doing very good. The encouragement has to come. And then one kind of support is, you need to uh, look into the great masters, how they make their uh, uh, approach. So that's uh, sometimes we, His Holiness Dalai Lama will say, approach of the, na uh, the Nalanda approach. So my teacher uh, this morning when I listened to he, his uh, recording, he said very nicely saying, more you have wish to mm, retaliate, is that right? Would retaliate to uh, right? Retaliate towards uh, the negative emotion, anger, or you, what really makes you feel uncomfortable inside you. <clears throat> then more uh, you are looking for a refuge. Then you will try to uh, research, right? Investigate. So mo less you have this kind of uh, to retaliate towards your negative emotion and then somebody comes to you say oh this is so great you should do it and then you will just do the soft part not the the, the real the true part of the, uh, the Buddha's teaching Wow well, it started to 10.30 so it's one hour already so, so what I want to conclude here is Buddha himself said, what is the teaching of Buddha? He taught so much. Then he concludes saying, Rangi semne yongsu dul dine sanke tembayin. More the teaching you will listen and then uh, you can uh, tame your mind, the disturbing mind. And that is the Buddha's teaching. So this is quite a powerful. So to tame your mind, first you need to think uh, that your mind can destroy or bring so much harm to others and to yourself. You have to accept it. And then, automatically, then you feel like regret of that how much harm that can bring to you. And then you are going to trim it. And you are going to find the antidote for that. And then I, th I think, uh, Buddha's teaching really helps. So that's uh, just I wanted to say. There are a few notes that here looking at me. Um. Okay. Okay. I think I covered most of everything. Okay, so maybe I can take two two questions from the audience because uh, at twelve I have to go. Okay, there's one there. Two. Okay. Mm. That's a really good one. Uh, Glenn, I think you have a uh, uh, one question for you. <laughs> That's for you. <laughs> uh, the uh, the so look at it like this. 
there are so many ways to uh, generate uh, compassion. If you walk and then you see some a poor uh, uh, a monkey f fallen from tr tree, maybe he didn't do good exercise, so he <laughs> fall and broken his uh, leg. That now the monkeys are the gift. The gift to the monkeys is, is jumping. So now he cannot jump anymore, and he cannot get a food. So we just bring like, oh, poor monkey, he cannot go and uh, try to look for food for him, himself or itself. Oh, very sad. Yes, it's very sad. And then I wanted to help. Okay, very good. This is another way of looking at the suffering of the sentient beings. Uh, that is also necessary. But then if you look into the how the all this world, world, world and then also if you look at the how this thinking of uh, the permanent feeling so permanent we always say that we are once who is born has to die not more than 100 years from now we are not going to stay but we are doing so many negative things not good things but very bad things that we just it's doing it like we are going to stay forever and then thinking this wish that people can see the impermanence a little bit because they cannot see the imper beauty of the magical of the impermanence but they are so attached to this permanent they are collecting so many unnecessary things. That includes the greed that we are talking about. <laughs> and then thinking this, which I can remind them, this greed comes from this permanent, clinging to this permanent thing. May I can teach them. This is another way of generating compassion by thinking the one side of ignorance of this, uh, other people and yourself and wish I can know it better, other people can know it better, so then they will can change their behaviors. Now the third one, most important one, emptiness. So, whatever we the appearance or what we are uh, see how things really function we somehow feel that is so true that is so great so automatically we fell into this kind of trap of truly existence so through that all this, also the, uh, the greed, and also the uh, permanence. The permanence also comes from thinking that things are truly existence there. Through that, you, this flower is already famous now. So this true, true, Flower, true, truly, that's a true for a flower for sure. But the, uh, what I meant is truly existent by its own. Nothing depends on th that. It's truly existence. The flower, you have this kind of a grasping, and on that you think, oh, that is in permanence. So you are not looking into the real flower. You are so grasped towards the, the, to the truly existence of the flower and then you are thinking oh we shouldn't think this is a permanent this is impermanence so that is one one the subtlest thing that we need to take out 
because of one very good teaching. Uh, one time, the the Buddha uh, was uh, giving a teaching, and then uh, some of his uh, student uh, to come to offer their realization. And then one monk said, "I went to the market, and then I saw uh, this." Uh, so many beautiful girls. And then he confessed to Buddha saying, uh, I'm so sorry, this attach strong attachment, desire came. And then I just remember your teaching and I stayed in the corner and meditated on impermanence. And then he said this to Buddha and very skillful, the master Buddha, he smiled and him said, good. And then he, once he left, there is a, a group of his uh, other students where he's teaching the emptiness. And then he said, do you think that person, that monk, what he's practiced is correct? And then before the other students answer, Buddha said, no. I don't call this kind of a stupidity Stupidity. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of a way of behavior or this is practice is incorrect. Then his answer, why he said this, Buddha said this, he said, uh, that Go, the monks, the, the, the object of the attachment, that girl is an illusion. That illusion girl is, that monk should understand that girl is the illusion one. And then he ne don't need to put so much effort of impermanence there. But he thought this is a true and then he say, I did this practice, will, will I will be happy? No way. That's what he said. So this is a brief answer for you. Okay. This is yeah. Thank you for your teaching. Uh, my question is, uh, I wonder what the role of humor is in Buddhism. Thank you. Humor? Like a the role of humor, like like laughter, jokes. Laughter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that I think, uh, we, if you look look at his holiness, we can understand. We really need it, because if uh, somehow if you, that master is uh, uh, sometimes we need th this kind of master who is skillful. That once you have a like long teaching class and there's no laughter, and that's so serious. And then we talk lots of stuff that sounds very serious and very confusing. Uh, also, that includes the emptiness. And then you don't have any f to, I don't call entertainment, but it's more like to relax a bit, to refresh. Sometimes we, to make uh, the audience happy, we, we use lots of uh, unnecessary jokes or, or not relevant thing, like a, a comedy, stand-up comedy. Uh, not, not that necessary, uh, but maybe uh, quite harmful. But with the respect to the audience, respect to the, what the topic that we have, and then relating to this, and then some kind of humor or some kind of a, um, uh, jokes could be uh, a meaningful joke and that uh, it because um, my, through my experience I have many teachers so one of my teachers he teaches uh, almost like it continuously sometimes three four hours and then I could see the whole classroom goes like 
looking at the watch and the paintings and then yawning and uh, all this thing. But my t kind teacher never, never get distracted what uh, the student, students think of him. But he really enjoys because I think he he's so focused and he he actually he's doing all the speaking he should be so tired <laughs> but he's not tired the people we are like so tired and then uh, my teacher sometimes give this kind of a very uh, the uh, nice story and jokes and then sometimes we forget whatever, like how many hours we spend, we forget. Like we will say, wow, today class went very well. Wow, that was so good, isn't it? So we come with some kind of like in our brain, we say whatever information for like it's three, four hours, whatever I spoke, only like one hour, like 30, 40 minutes will stay here. And then it goes like less, 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 less. So at the end, we need to have in, in our heart that like, oh, this is so good, so beautiful. Sometimes the humor or this, that meaningful humor can leave a strong imprint. So it is necessary. But keep this in your mind. If you wanted to become a teacher in the future, then sometimes, uh, sometimes the, a very uh, skillful sculpting is also necessary. Because then automatically some kind of a concentration and this awareness comes very strongly. I, because I have uh, two uh, different uh, types of t teachers. One, lots of joke and humor, very skillful. One teacher, could be a little bit serious. But I can feel this compassion boiling underneath. But then the seriousness and then saying like, okay, how do you answer that? That sounds so serious. And then he's so kind, he will make a question for me, say, do you think this kind of question that we ask here is quite necessary? And what will be your answer? So he will make this kind of a a serious thing and then make it convenient for me, easy for me. So I feel I'm surrounded by two different types of love. So this is necessary. Okay. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, so most of you are so young <laughs> and now in this gen generation uh, our generation uh, has a very big responsibility because we can see uh, the first of all the climate change and then also the wars are happening. The most of thing, the thing, the climate change, uh, we somehow can f talk and bring some kind of thing. But the most necessary, urgent thing is we should, uh, if we wanted to talk about the peace in this world, we need to think about how to take our hate away from us. We talk lots of like peace and peace, but mostly of from like me, I'm trying my best to take the hate towards. But when you say this is good, and then automatically you f have a hate towards that. But then how are you going to take this away? We talk about compassion, but when the compassion becomes bias, and then it is a not a, a compassion anymore. So when we talk about 
any kind of like starting with your uh, friends and family so we need to watch that this way of talking brings hatred to me so i need to stop this restart in a computer we have this restart but difficult we don't have a restart here but from here you're saying okay i take this back which is very helpful practice so maybe you said something to this by hatred and then you feel it and my kind teacher sometimes he will say he will say something this behavior is so bad and then he will just uh, slap on his mouth <laughs> doing like this mm, okay okay i take this back very good teaching mm. we need that so whatever we judge sometimes we say okay out of love i'm saying this compassion but we need to think whether it is really genuine thing that it's coming out or not. We watch this. So this is how I think I'm keeping my environment safe, with, starting with my family. I remind them, I remind myself, and then you, young generation, you start doing this. And then this is how we can start to fix a problem but then you do it and even we fail no regrets because we tried if we don't try it and we fail that's failure nothing good in there so i think uh, we all are on the same page so please as uh, i believe i belong in this generation so i'm sharing this with you all so we should work together. So work together in a different countries, driven home, but still we can be together. Mind has to be connected. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody, and thank you to Shita for this uh, opportunity. And now, why I choose today? Because to to Shita. Uh, request me to give the uh, teaching uh, on the 23rd but then I said well maybe uh, 17th will be better because on the 18th His Holiness is going to give a, a teaching which is tomorrow uh, so then um, these days His Holiness the Dalai Lama is not giving lots of explanation because his Holiness has, up to now, he, now he's almost 90. Uh, up to now, he's been giving so much explanation. Wow, if you look on the internet, you can... His Holiness has given so much explanation. Not in, only in Dharamsala, all over the world. So now, uh, actually, not much explanation is needed. But he's just... If you look at him, he's an example. I just uh, heard from his attendant when first, when now f three, four years before, when his holiness Dalai Lama was uh, having hard hearing, so then they give him a device to hear better. And then his holiness put it, and then, uh, because it's really annoying, you know, this this machine it, it's not like the normal hearing that we do it's more you can hear so many unnecessary sounds that you hear at the same time and then his holiness said no this is so uncover uncomfortable so uh, lots of distraction i don't need that and then somebody <coughs> close to him said you even you don't need it but the other people who comes to see you they really wanted to uh, say something to you and you need to hear it. And then His Holiness meditated a little bit and said, I have heard, I'll, now I'm in the 80s, up to now this year has heard so much already. <laughs> so much already. And I have, from this, I have spoken so much. So maybe now I need a peace. 
So if that person really wants to say, he will never give up and yeah, he will try again and again. And I will try again and again to hear. <laughs> so this is not necessary. That was the almost five, four or five years ago, he has given this message. So now tomorrow, it is whatever he says, oh, bodhicitta, so important. It is the great being himself who has seen the bodhicitta, felt the bodhicitta, have the full realization, saying this is a great, immense powerful. But we, I am kind of a person who stayed near to his holiness and copying, good copy, trying to copy his holiness and say it, it's so good. But I can describe more. But the actual experience is his holiness. So tomorrow, the teaching won't be long, but there, whatever you need to do, prayer, there you just feel like this is amazing. You bring this energy out. Whatever we just spoke about, emptiness, compassion, taking away the hatred, you will find everything there. Original brand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Investigated in accord with all that I have heard, day and night through the four reasonings, mind born of reflection on these topics of contemplation, may this discernment sever all doubts. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezig Tenzin Gatsu, please remain until samsara ends. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent dharma. By completing the qualities of the grounds and paths, may I quickly attain the state of Vajradhara. I fully dedicate all these virtues to be able to train just like the hero Manjushri who knows reality and just like Samantabhadra as well. I fully dedicate all my roots of virtue with a dedication praised as the best by all the gone beyond victorious ones of the three times in order to have good conduct. 
with my heart going out with great compassion in whatever direction the most precious teachings have not yet spread or once spread have declined, may I reveal this treasure of happiness and aid. Thank you. So in the teaching normally you might notice uh, two things. One, Lama coming in, the, the teacher, and making a prostration. It's prostration making to the throne, the, the seat. So it is a, such a powerful teaching saying, whatever I'm going to sit here and stay uh, on this, I'm going to represent the Buddha's teaching and unbiased, with the compassion, whatever the, the great being has done it here, I'm going to do the same thing. This is called ticha, to the prostration, to the throne. And then uh, you can see these offerings. These offerings, they give it to me, they take back. <laughs> they, uh, so uh, this, this offering, what they're saying, please give the teaching. So it's not like I wanted to teach and come. It is the people who you are here, the Anila and the uh, Gishila here, represent you and saying that we wanted to hear, you say it. So it's very healthy. So Buddha himself said, don't give the teachings free. So it doesn't mean take a money. Free means just don't say like I wanted to say it to you. But let other people yes. have some kind of a respect to this and feel like this is an antidote. Like, like when we go to the hospital and then you looking for an antidote there and you feel like it's urgently needed and then you are going to have show so much respect to that. So this is needed. So I find that this is uh, very healthy and uh, very important. Okay. Can we also recite, please, uh, Rinpoche's long life prayer? Oh, not necessary now. I need to go. So, your prayer and wish for me to long stay long life, I accept it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.